Now, obviously, Winter Watch is the most important BBC programme right now, but <laughs> we do know that there is another one that you've all been keeping an eye on. So, well, we thought we'd uh, piggyback off their success. Welcome to Watch Out, The Traitors. Animal edition. <laughs> we spent ages thinking of that. <laughs> right, so we wanted to look. Do we reveal ourselves? Can you please, yes. Yeah, but nobody down. guessed it was me, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so we thought we'd take a look at some of the traitors in UK wildlife. So Michaela, please, we're going to go one, two, three. Please, okay. can you reveal our first traitor? Are you going to say anything about it before I, I reveal I will it? after. Okay. This is the big Here reveal. Here we go. Can you believe? Can you believe It's it? a raven. Who would have guessed the raven was one of the traitors? Mm, I don't think that one's that hard, actually. But ravens have been known to use deceptive tactics in order to conceal their food. So they will forage in social groups. And, of course, foraging in social groups means more competition. So what a raven will do, if it's got some food and it's caching it in the ground, if it sees somebody having a look at it, it will actually dig it up and move it elsewhere. If you ask me, that's a sensible tactic, Hannah. Sens <laughs> Do you know, if, if people haven't seen Traitors, they're not going to know what we're talking about, but it is a fabulous programme that's on the BBC at the moment. We're, we're hoping, we're hoping that you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're really hoping. So, can we please reveal our next traitor species? Oh, my <gasps> goodness, who would have guessed that? It's the grey squirrel. The grey squirrel. And again... A study found that grey squirrels will deceive their conspecifics, and they do this when they're creating their stores in autumn. If they know other grey squirrels are watching them, they will actually pretend to dig a hole and then move their food elsewhere and dig it there. It's all being an opportunistic feeder, isn't it? I mean, who wouldn't do that if food is scarce? Absolutely. If I saw someone taking a look at me whilst I was hiding my food, I'd hide it somewhere Yeah, I've seen else. you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Every day from Chris Packham in the, in the canteen. Um, so now let's reveal our final traitor. Okay, here we go. Can you guess who it was? <gasps> traitor number three. The swan. regal swan. One that you wouldn't think to be a traitor. What do they do you? then? Go on. Well, they are known to be highly monogamous, which means that breeding pairs will stay together for life. But... This year is the 60th anniversary of WWT's Buick Swan study where they've been focused on their patterns on their bill. And unusually, they found a very rare case of swan divorce. Now, over the 60 years, they've identified 10,000 different individuals. But in 2007, they had a breeding pair, wintered in Slimbridge. Everything was fine in 2008. But in 2009 they came back with different partners. Now, this is very, very unusual, but it is swan divorce. But you wonder, you know, why are they doing that? Is it because their partners didn't make it, so they had to find a new partner? Or is it really divorce where they've both gone away and found different partners? Now, that's something we don't know. We'll have to take that up with WWT. <laughs> yes, if you could find out the answer to that, I'd appreciate but it. But it is, it is known that 90% of the birds in the world usually practice monogamy compared to just 5% of mammals. Now, the reason birds do it is because if they stay together, they can breed earlier in the year. And over the years of staying together, they have more chance of raising their chicks successfully. But in mammals, well, male mammals can't feed the young, can they? Because females breastfeed mm -hmm. them. So it's thought, the theory is, that mammals don't really perform monogamy as much because the father can't feed the young at birth. Do you know it's what, a theory, though. It's a theory. What I find fascinating, Hannah, is, you know, we read these books about different species and there are all these figures, you know, 20% divorce rate or whatever, so many stay together. I'd love to someone just to write a book about human species. How complicated would that chapter be about how many stay together, how many don't, how many have numerous partners? <laughs> There you, you go. For, that? for there anyone that has a challenge for somebody <laughs> watching, please get in touch with this in spring. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be a massive book. But of course, as you were saying, they're just being opportunistic and doing what they do. And no, no wildlife species is a traitor. We love them all, don't we? 
Of course we do. But I love the traitors. I, I love the programme, actually. I'm quite a big fan. <laughs> it's a very addictive format, it's really isn't it? Addictive. Very addictive. I'd be a rubbish traitor. Yeah, you would. Hopeless at keeping a secret. You would. I think I'd be quite good. <laughs> yeah, I think you might I be. I would. I'd hide everything.